First of all, let's straighten out this keyway issue. If you look at the picture, you'll notice that there's a zero dot right above the keyway pointing to the zero dot on the, on the cam sprocket. This is called straight up timing. Prior to 1972, the stock timing chain only had this one slot and it was straight up. And then after 1985, they only had this one slot in the stock timing gear, which is straight up. From 1972 through 1985, inclusively, Ford used a 40 degree crank delay, which uses this slot shown in the, by the arrow. Notice that the mark on the slot, the mark above the slot is to the counter clockwise side of the slot and that makes the keyway a little bit ahead of the mark. In fact, it's eight degrees ahead of the mark. I've been told by some people that 1977 truck engines started going straight up timing before 1985. So you have to check your own sprocket to find out what you have. Because I'm using a 1975 stock timing chain, I have the eight degree crankshaft advance that I have to deal with. The camshafts didn't consider this. The camshafts, when the custom camshafts are ground, they assume you have a straight up cam timing gear. I should say tam, cam timing chain. And there's only one slot, so you can't change it. So I'm going to have to back out this eight degree advance from all my measurements to get back to a straight up timing mark equivalent, which is required for my numbers to match the cam data sheet. Before I assemble this engine I will change out the cam timing set for a straight up timing set so I can reap the full benefits of a high torque RV crankshaft grind. If your ti timing chain set is straight up then you don't have to worry about this 8 degrees I keep adding or subtracting during this following video. Be more accurate, we can go 50 thousandths from below. That number's on the wheel. Go 50 thousandths on the other side. That number's on the wheel. Halfway between those two numbers should be top dead center. I want you to look carefully at the timing marks. I'm at top dead center. Notice these timing marks do not line up. That's because Ford has a four degree cam retard built into the stock timing chains. So I'm going to advance the crankshaft eight degrees. And notice now the timing marks do line up, but the keyway is offset. That's a stock Ford timing chain. Custom cams don't account for this and require a straight up timing chain system, not the stock timing chain. Straight up means the dot is directly above the keyway. Before we can use this data sheet, we have to understand what's going on here. The pictures are a little bit elusive. Notice the exhaust closes. Top left corner here is a minus 14. It says it's after top dead center. That minus is very significant. The minus is also used on the intake opens parameter. This is before top dead center. The picture actually shows where the crankshaft degree wheel would be when the intake opens. However, they do some magic and they switch it to the other side and say it's before top dead center. The degree wheel will show it's after top dead center. But in order to make the data sheet work, you have to understand you have to flip this intake opens on the other side of TDC to get the data sheet numbers. And the data sheet number is four degrees before top dead center. Once you understand this, then the exhaust closes parameters have the same rule. Notice there's a minus 14 for exhaust closes. It says after top dead center, but yet it's shown before top dead center in the picture. It's really before top dead center on your degree wheel too. But once again, when you see a minus sign, you gotta flip it on the other side of the reference. 
So in this case, it becomes 14 degrees after top dead center. I don't know why they did this. More than one manufacturer does this. So I think it's a standard. To get the data sheet to work for you, you have to comply with these flip-flops. I also have to factor out the 8-degree crankshaft advance for 1975 Ford. I created this portion of the video by recording 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation non-stop except to change the tool that moves the crankshaft. It captured all the, the uh, dial indicators so we could go back later and add narration to the video. I also slowed the video down by a factor of 50 percent. The next event will be the exhaust valve opening. The next event will be the exhaust valve reaching peak and there's no spec on this so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm just going to approximate the peak. The next event will be the intake valve opening 50 thousandths as the exhaust goes towards closing. The next event will be 50 thousandths before the intake peak opening. This will be used with 50 thousandths after peak opening to find the intake valve peak degrees. Our next event will be 50 thousandths before the intake valve closes. Now we will finish our 720 degrees of rotation and end up back at top dead center on the compression stroke. You will need to pause the video at all the time timing events so that you can read the text that pops up. 